So at a point, he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. I'm mad. This is how you act when you are out of control. I don't want to ever see my mother have to go through this again. Never. A gruesome story leads off our newscast. Milwaukee police found body parts. I suppose it could have turned into a, a normal hobby like taxidermy, but it, it didn't. It veered off into animals to humans. I, I, I still don't understand it. Dahmer would spend the next 24 hours confessing, telling in vivid detail of a murder spree that began in 1978 when he was 18 and ended with 17 young men dead. Why would Dahmer have, as he put it, created his own holocaust? How did he become so filled with evil? I knew I was sick or evil or both. Milwaukee, 1978. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer was his name. Cool, calm, collected. A few words people would say, I think to describe Jeffrey. Jeffrey was the true definition of a serial killer. And through this interview, I want you to pay attention to Jeffrey, his emotions, when he speak, when he's talk. You can tell, you might feel, it seems like, Jeffrey really felt some type of remorse for doing what he did. But, it comes to being a psychopath, a good actor, crazy, deranged out of your mind you can't really tell but for me outside looking in it seems like Jeffrey was the true definition of somebody that's crazy somebody that bipolar snaps go in and out so what led Jeffrey to become what he became he killed 17 men and actually men with his sexual preference but in my opinion, he was really schizophrenic. About three personalities going on in that one body, that one mind. See what I'm saying? Put something together special for y'all. So I need you to hit that like. I need you to hit that subscribe. Let's get it. A gruesome story leads off our newscast. Milwaukee police found body parts in a north side apartment, and now they wonder if they've uncovered some kind of death factory. This was the scene earlier this morning. Police hired a private contractor to haul a refrigerator and a tank of acid out of the apartment in the 900 block of North 25th Street. Because of the acid, some neighbors were evacuated briefly. Police found parts of bodies, leading them to believe the man they arrested is a mass murderer. From our investigation, we feel that this individual strongly is involved in other homicides. Uh, we have taken evidence out of the building by the medical examiner to be examined. What brought the police here in the first place? The officers were stopped by an individual who claimed he was in the apartment and became engaged in a dispute with the owner of the apartment and uh, left the apartment and called the officers. A 31-year-old man was arrested at that apartment. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner will release more details on this case. And he came up with an idea that was more horrific than anything he had already done. My brother was Errol Lindsay. He was 19 years old. He left home going to get a key made, and he just never came back. He never came back. Errol Lindsay was Dahmer's first experiment. Errol was just like the normal kid trying to hustle up, you know, on money, however he could get it, you know. He met this individual approximately March of 91 on the corner of 27th and Kilbourne. He offered this individual money for posing and to view videos. Earl was not gay. You know, and if he was gay, I, you know, he was still my brother and I still would love him, but he wasn't gay. I don't know what it took to get him to his house. What Jeffrey did to Errol Lindsay was so beyond the pale. I mean, you really can't write this stuff. In his mind, he was trying to create a kind of a zombie, someone in a zombie state. He wanted these people to stay with him he didn't want them to leave 
and he didn't really want them to die. I had this reoccurring fantasy of, uh, of uh, meeting a hitchhiker on the road and uh, of taking him hostage and, and doing what I wanted. And uh, I never in my wildest nightmares thought that uh, it would become a reality. I, I, I still don't understand it. I don't know why. From uh, about 15 years on up, uh, a great deal of my thoughts were uh, basically unshareable with anyone. And so I just uh, closed myself off and uh, just put on uh, a mask of normalcy. Started have, having obsessive uh, thoughts of, of uh, violence uh, intermingled with sex. Just got worse and worse. Uh, I didn't know how to tell anyone about it, so I didn't. I was 18 years old, driving home. Uh, I saw this hitchhiker about a mile from my house, and he caught my eye. I drove past him, thought to myself, should I stop and pick him up, or should I just keep on going? I wish I just keep on, kept on going, but I didn't. I turned around, picked him up, and uh, that's when, that's when it, the nightmare became a reality. It just, uh, it, it just seemed so bizarre to me that the, this obsession that I had been thinking about and wanting, just uh, all the all the parts are there. And they, they make it possible to make it happen, just at the just at the time when it could happen, when there's nobody at the house for two weeks. I met this guy at one of the uh, bars downtown, Milwaukee bars. We went back to the hotel, just planning on uh, getting drunk. I had put some sleeping pills in his drink to render him unconscious, and uh, I was just going to spend the night with him. When I woke up in the morning, uh, my forearms were bruised and his chest was, was bruised and blood was coming out of his mouth. I have no memory of beating him to death, but I must have. And that's when it, when it all started again. Uh, I had no intention of, of hurting him at all. I tried to... Uh, create uh, living zombies with uh, muriatic acid in the, in the drill uh, but it, it never worked no the killing wasn't wasn't the objective I just wanted to have the person under my complete control uh, to do with as I wanted it, it, it made me feel like they were a permanent part of me Besides, besides the just mere curiosity of what it would be like, it made them feel that they were a part of me, and it, it gave me a, a sexual uh, uh, satisfaction to do that. I had a box in my... Uh, bedroom closet and uh, it it uh, contained uh, the mummified head and, and uh, genitals of uh, a young man I met in one of the bars down in Milwaukee and it was a locked metal box uh, my dad uh, one week came to visit and happened to see it and uh, wondering what was in it. He didn't know. Nobody knew. I told him it was uh, pornography, some magazines. And we he wasn't satisfied with that answer. We got into uh, a bit of an argument because I wouldn't open it up. He uh, took the, the locked box down to the basement and was about to uh, smash it open. I came back in the house, we reconciled.
If families were not missing the victims, Jeffrey Dahmer's family was missing clues that something was terribly wrong. There were close calls, like this one with his father, Lyle. The reconciliation with his father would mean the lies would go on and that Jeffrey Dahmer would continue to hunt down victims in the gay bars of Milwaukee and them. But in a city with a relatively low crime rate, why were the police not connecting the murders? Dahmer's seeming normality helped him hide his reign of terror. And coming up on part two of Jeffrey Dahmer, the original files. Okay, hi, um, this, um, I'm on 25th and State, and this is young man, he is butt naked, he has been beaten up, he is very bruised up, he can't stand, he's study fall out, he has, he is butt naked, he has no clothes on. So you go back to work this Sunday night? Right. Yeah. Why would Dahmer have, as he put it, created his own holocaust? How did he become so filled with evil? Stay tuned.